Let's discuss replacing the EVAP canister on this 2001 Honda Odyssey. Now on this style EVAP system, we've got several other components here. We've got a bypass solenoid, we've got the pressure sensor, we've got a two-way valve here. And uh, because this vehicle has spent its life in the rust belt, it's very difficult to remove one of the components without the other. And so we're gonna go ahead and replace all the components here, but first off, let's get this skid plate down and then we'll remove the entire assembly and break it up into individual components. Now that we've got the skid plate out of the way, we can see the vent solenoid a little bit better and a good view of the canister, along with the bypass valve and the two-way valve here. So we're gonna remove the hoses here. Sometimes we might not wanna mark them so we get them place back correctly, especially some of these smaller ones over here, and we're going to remove the unit as a whole. All right, now that we've got our old canister out with the vent solenoid on it, we're going to replace the vent solenoid while we're replacing the canister as well. You know, while we're in there, we might as well replace both components together. Now this has an O-ring on there that comes supplied with. It's a good idea to lubricate this a little bit, and we'll gently rock it back and forth, get it to seat good. We need that to seal off good in order to have our EVAP system work as designed. So now you can see there's quite a bit of rust on this old canister. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of fighting here to get these bolts out. Otherwise, we can just go ahead and replace them with two new four millimeter bolts. We'll transfer our hoses over and we'll be ready to install our new canister and vent solenoid again. Well, we've got our canister out, it's also a good time to look at the bypass solenoid, the two-way valve, and also the pressure sensor. So this is part of the bracketry that we've removed. Now I've already gone ahead and removed a couple of the stubborn screws, and now we can slide this off the bracket. And so you can see the components here. We've got two more screws holding these components together. So we'll see if we can get those apart, but if you look closely, you'll see this is already rusted and split open and cause a little bit of a leak there as well. This is just another EVAP code waiting to happen. So while we're in here, we're gonna go ahead and replace all the components as a system. It's very important to note that there's gonna be a couple O-rings that come with a kit, and that's gonna seal this between the two-way valve and the bypass solenoid. So when we mate these together, we need those to be sealed tightly. So make sure to install these O-rings, get that mounted properly, and we'll go ahead and transfer the hoses here we'll be ready to install it back in the vehicle. Now that we've transferred all of our components, let's go ahead and reinstall, very similar to how we removed it. So we're gonna find the lineup tabs on the back of the canister here, and we'll install that, slide it into place, and we'll reinstall the hold down bolt on the other side of it here. With the canister mounted in place, we can go ahead and install our new two-way valve, bypass solenoid, and pressure sensor. So we've just got one hose to connect here. We've got our other ones to connect, pretty self-explanatory, and we'll make our electrical connections and then mount it back in place, making sure to use the original rubber grommets. Now that we've got everything mounted properly, we've got our hoses hooked up, electrical connections made, let's not forget about the skid plate here and protect our new investment. And so we're gonna go ahead and install this in the same manner in which we took it off, and we should be all set. Might not be a bad idea if you have a scan tool to clear the codes and also run a self-test, make sure the EVAP system is working as it's designed. 